I will talk about something you know. I'm sure you know. I will tell you the life in Istanbul in 1582 through a series of miniature painting which uh, are in a manuscript I studied for my PhD. Uh, also caused me to study the Ibrahim Pasha Palace because uh, because I my, one of my professors, which were on the committee of my uh, PhD jury, uh, criticized me about about not working on this uh, monument. Now, in 1582, um, Murat III decided to celebrate the circumcision of, uh, of his son, Mehmet, and organized a very, very important festive, festival. Uh, it took place at the Hippodrome. And he moved from Topkapı to Ibrahim Pasha Palace, uh, which is at the site of uh, of the Hippodrome, and um, also with him, uh, 40 um, harem carriages brought harem women <coughs> from Topkapı. And they, uh, I will show you where they were sitting, uh, from the, uh, behind the lattice windows, they also followed the festival. It lasted 52 days and 52 nights because there were also some celebration, some entertainment uh, at night as well. Let's see what happened. Here we have um, Murat III coming from, uh, from the old palace uh, to Ibrahim Pasha Palace. Why old palace? In, in the old palace, which was situated um, at the site of Istanbul University now, uh, there were old, old, old women of the dynasty, the grandmothers and mothers, uh, for that reason, for every occasion, they used to go, the sultans used to go there, and the crown princes used to go and pay their respects to the old woman there. For that reason, he also visited the old visit, old palace, and he is coming on, uh, on his horse, he is coming to Ibrahim Pasha Palace. Let's go. So here we see the crown prince, Mehmet, coming to the Ibrahim Pasha Palace. Looking at this gate, I'm sure you cannot, uh, you, you, you think that, although you, you might know the Ibrahim Pasha Palace, you cannot remember this entrance. Mm -hmm. But it is still there. It is, it is in the corner of the palace. It is next to the uh, Papudai, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. it's in the corner, and also it is um, inside of the arch. It's, it's full of things. Sometimes Coca-Cola boxes, <laughs> sometimes some uh, cars, Part there, so it is a hidden, hidden corner. Uh, but when you go all around the uh, Ibrahim Pasha Palace, please try to see this because it is important. It is important because when uh, Murat III decided to make, to arrange the uh, the festival at the 
uh, hippodrome and stay stay in the in the Ibrahim Pasha Palace. So they made some changes, and for, for, for that occasion, he had a new entrance to the palace constructed. Highly probably, it was um, constructed by Sina. For, it is a beautiful, very well proportioned entrance. Okay, here you see him uh, coming into the palace. Beautiful gold and silver uh, fabrics uh, laid uh, at the feet of his uh, horse. It was a tradition when um, when the Sultan or the crown prince visited a house or a palace, they used to uh, put uh, valuable fabrics at the, at the feet of the horse or himself, okay? <coughs> then after entering this, all these people will share these uh, very valuable fabrics. Okay, let's go. For the festival, um, beautiful um, novels, these are called novels, these are the artificial trees were prepared. They were, some of them were so big that um, carrying uh, them through the streets of Istanbul, some of the balconies were pulled down of the houses. And uh, the Sultan also paid some money uh, for, the house, for the houses which uh, lost uh, which um, lost their balconies because he did not want to make anybody <coughs> unhappy. Okay, let's let's go. So, what you see in here for the festival, every every single uh, uh, trade. Or, or people who had any any kind of um, uh, skill they should show. And here <coughs> we have some uh, people carrying some some little statues statues. As you know, it is forbidden to make statues in Islamic uh, world. But how how it happens? Because they were made of sugar, they, they were made of sugar, and for that reason the artists uh, could they they could dare to make to create some uh, statues because they will be eaten up and they will be destroyed. Okay, so if. If anybody asks you if there is a sculpture in Islamic art, you can say yes. <laughs> <laughs> but they are made of sugar. Okay. So here we have, now we see also the Ibrahim Pasha Palace. Here, here is the Diwan Nane, the reception room. It is huge. Today, uh, this building is, uh, houses Turkish and Islamic Museum. And in this part, we have uh, the Sajuki, beautiful big uh, carpets. <coughs> this is, this part, you cannot see because in the recess of the uh, facade, um, this wooden structure was built for this occasion, and in these uh, lodges we have high official um, high officials, also some uh, some foreign diplomats, as you can see from their uh, different uh, costumes. 
uh, they are here sitting in, in this part. And there are also some Muslim diplomats. Uh, they, they were staying in some um, tents uh, across the across the hippodrome on this side of the hippodrome, so we cannot see them. <coughs> okay, at this side of the hippodrome, um, the food was prepared. The big cauldrons were there, and uh, food was prepared. And for every day. Uh, food was prepared for the for the public. Can you imagine uh, how how people enjoyed? It is not only the guilds of Istanbul who came to the hippodrome and showed their skills, but also some public. We see in here uh, the uh, Istanbul people. I could enjoy this uh, festival. So this was a wooden structure, and behind these windows, you see, they are all uh, painted in red. Uh, if you can see closely, that uh, then you will dis you will see that uh, they are all covered with lattice lattice windows. These are lattice windows. And they could, um, all the Harem women uh, were sitting behind this lattice windows. They could show, they could see the festival, what was going on uh, at the square, but uh, they wouldn't be seen. So, here we have a weaver. He is weaving, he is weaving. And uh, through all these uh, guild shows, we see the life of Istanbul. Okay, let's go. Here we have the fur sellers. As you can see, they carry the fur, and they wear some. And different, we see some different kinds of furs, as you can, uh, maybe you can see, I, I'm not sure. But in here, you see, <coughs> in this part of the uh, Ibrahim Pasha Palace, the, even today, uh, you, you see the balcony. It is in Turkish, it's called Şahnişin. And he, we see him sitting there. And next to him is the crown prince, and these are uh, his attendants. These guild members come from this part, and they, they walk <coughs> down, and when they come uh, under the balcony of the sultan, as you can see in here, they pray for the health and uh, for the health of uh, the sultan and his son. Then uh, they present, sometimes they present some gifts and then they turn, they turn, they make a U-turn and go out of the square. And we also see some janissaries, uh, <coughs> some uh, some uh, people who who takes care of the order of the place. Okay, let's go. Here we have the dancers. These dancers are men, not women, because no no Muslim woman uh, um, uh, was allowed to dance in public. So uh, these are men dressed like, uh, like women. And they, they dance, as you see, in here. And here we have musicians. This is a source, this book is a source of information for everything. If you work, if you want to see 
the uh, musical instruments, for instance, Turkish, all Turkish musical instruments, you have to look at these miniature paintings. You see all the different kinds. And if you want to see the costumes of different guilds or groups of people, you can find uh, miniatures showing them. Here, there are some women, as you see, <coughs> with a way. This is, as far as I, so I, I have seen so many Turkish miniature paintings all around the world, I can say that this is the earliest miniature painting showing a whaled woman. So when whale came to Turkey, uh, to, to the Ottoman Empire, I cannot tell you, but uh, I can tell you that before this uh, time, 1582, no, there is no representation of woman with whale. It should be, it should be uh, after uh, the conquest of Egypt. Uh, this, this fashion, this Arabic fashion came to Istanbul. This is my, uh, my suggestion. I, uh, I'm not sure. Okay, let's go. So here we have some more musicians from time to time between the uh, parade of the guilds. Uh, musicians come to this uh, arena and uh, they make music and uh, we have also again dancers so we have more uh, more depictions of of Turkish uh, musical instruments here is obelisk and here is the other um, uh, Monument, and this is the serpentine column. This is for shooting. You know, they aim this top, and uh, they show their skill of uh, <coughs> this uh, sport. Here we have some Galagos puppet show. Uh, puppet uh, show people, and they have two. Uh, tents, as you see, and um, this man took off his outer clothes and put them in there. So it is it is important for our uh, research, for our culture, uh, since it shows that Caragos was. Uh, active or played in the in uh, in the 16th century okay let's go these entertainers these entertainers are uh, are saka this is watermen that means watermen uh, they there were many watermen um, worked during this festival they uh, they were dressed in very funny uh, costumes, and uh, they dance. They they dance, and also they uh, they take care of the order of the place. Here you see a bag. They carry a bag uh, on their shoulders. These bags are generally. Uh, filled with water or or oil. What they do if somebody uh, does not um, uh, behave well, so with that bag they they um, hit him or pour the water or or the oil. So this punishment would not disturb the joy of the 
of the festival. And it, be it becomes a, uh, another show, but also it is a punishment. So people try to behave. These are the descendants of the prophet. Uh, it is easy to understand because they are all uh, heavy. They all have uh, green uh, green wrappings on their uh, headgear. This means that they are the descendant of uh, the prophet. Okay, let's go. Okay, here we have dervish, um, dervishes, maybe dervishes, and uh, they were uh, purely. And as you can see, their costumes are not settled down. This is not like uh, the ones we have today. They shaped uh, in, in this way in the 19th century. But in the early days, you know, they, uh, they were dressed like that. But their headgear, you know, the shape of their headgear is old. We can trace them. There is also a manuscript like, uh, called Nusret Name, uh, and a, ma a, a miniature painting uh, which shows the interior of the mausoleum of Mevlana Celaleti Rumi. In there, there were there are some whirling dervishes, Mevlana dervishes, that we see their costumes and uh, the way they turn. Okay. Ah. Okay. Let's. Ah, these are muezzins. Muezzins, and they call uh, uh, prayers. They call for prayers, and uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the best voices were chosen for this task. Some more uh, tariqat uh, Sufi Sufis here. Everybody uh, who had something to show. Uh, came to this festival and they showed their skills or, or just they came and greeted uh, the Sultan and the uh, Crown Prince and went. So they took part in it. For that reason we, we can find every, every sort of people in these miniature paintings. Okay, let's change. Oh, here we have the detailed uh, miniature painting of uh, these figures, Muezzins. And here, here we have more Sufis. Okay, let's go. These are another Sufi group in white dresses, Jewish dresses, and florists. It is, it's very interesting to find florists because uh, there were also some uh, 200 uh, florists in Istanbul uh, selling cut, cut flowers. <coughs> cut flowers. As I've told in my uh, various talks that I, uh, in my youth, I believe that giving a bouquet of flowers to somebody, um, this tradition, or to, to, to go to the cemetery, to the graveyard, and put some fresh uh, flowers on the grave, was a foreign, uh, foreign influence. We took it from Europe. No, we had, we had this tradition. And for that reason, there were 200 florists in Istanbul. They, uh, they, uh, they sold uh, fresh cut flowers as well as some fruits. <coughs> and mostly, this came from the uh, private garden of the Sultan. 
So here we have flower sellers, and <clears throat> here we have, you see, the fruits they carry, and here you see how uh, the, you know, they put them into water, into, into vases. Um, we also, we also learn how uh, Turkish people decorated their rooms with flowers. They used to put uh, the vases in rows uh, on the floor. Or they put on some <coughs> trays. And uh, it was very important for them to choose the, the, the vase for the flowers. You know, they don't just put into a, any vase, but you know, the vase and the flower should match to each other, the form and so on. Uh, here we have um, what uh, flowers we have here, some uh, liliums and some carnations. We can we can see, but I don't want to start talking about flowers. Okay, let's go. Um, of course, tulip. A man was very skilled in making uh, paper uh, tulips. So he made a red paper tulip, a huge, giant one, and he brought it to the arena. But it is, in the text, it said red, but in the miniature painting, it is yellow, as you see. <laughs> and people were, got very much excited about <coughs> the sight of this, of this paper uh, tulip, but unfortunately, it rained, and it was destroyed. Okay, let's go. Here we have gardeners. Gardeners, could, of course, they could not bring their garden, but they made a model. They made models of their gardens and brought them on uh, wheels. As you can see, it is, it is really interesting because, because it's a model, we can see the main elements of an Ottoman garden. And uh, we have cypress trees and a water, a fountain, and uh, of course trees. Also, some flower beds. Okay, let's go. Here we have another uh, model, garden model, and we also have uh, some cypress trees, as well as a fountain and cut flowers because it, it was not so easy to, to bring some flowers um, planted, but they brought cut flowers. Here is another garden, model, um, model garden, as you can see. <coughs> and this is more um, naturalistic type, and we, this is a very, very uh, beloved, very loved uh, motif. Uh, <coughs> cypress tree, and uh, on top of it, there is a flower, a flowering thing. But in here, we have some uh, leaves uh, wrapped around. Okay. So a man made a paper uh, bird. It's a cut. So this was also very much loved. As you can see, I, I showed only the detail. Uh, it's a simurk. You cannot name it. It's a fantasy uh, uh, bird. OK, let's go. So a man, as I told you, whoever had any skill to show, 
uh, came here, and uh, this man um, trained his donkey, and uh, they danced together. <laughs> okay, let's go. A cart was brought by Galata uh, Christians, and in which there was a man cut, or some uh, body parts uh, among the uh, hay, and it was uh, with with some blood and so, and people were all scared. But suddenly, after a while, suddenly four men jumped up. They uh, they uh, they were all in the hay, and some parts of their body was out. <coughs> so. So it was a, a, a trick, a, a game, okay. So this man um, put his hands at the back and bound them, had, had them bound, and uh, using only his teeth, uh, he saddled his horse uh, without touching with his hand. So, it, it's, he's, 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 show, he's showing his skill. Okay, let's go. So, from time to time, we also have some war games. Uh, here is a castle, as you see, and this is, of course, a Christ, Christian uh, soldiers. Christian, uh, ex Christian castle uh, conquered by Turks, of course, <laughs> and uh, these are prisoners. They are coming out. Here is the fight going on. It is. These are what are they? This. These are uh, the. The addition, additional uh, uh, figures of a child who enjoyed the manuscript. Yeah. So probably, probably one of the uh, one or two um, two boys, highly probably boys, because it's a war uh, war uh, scene. They. They played. They, they were while they were enjoying the miniature painting. They made all these scribbles. Okay. Here is another war game, very similar to this, to the other one. And uh, this is how they are showing how they make a paper uh, castle. Uh, in here, I would also like to add that. Uh, you might know Matrak Cimasur. He was a very skilled. He was very skilled uh, in making paper uh, castles. He had many, uh, many skills, and one of them uh, was making paper castles. Okay, and archery was um, a very important game or sport among the Turkish men. And uh, there were some talimhane. This is the practicing houses of archery uh, in various parts of the city. And here you see uh, a talimhane. It's a, uh, a practicing place. And he is practicing uh, the archery. There's, there are also uh, getting ready to practice archery. Okay. Ah, this game did not survive to our day, but uh, this is a puppet, and it turns around, and while turning, you know, they hit probably the um, the target, and while hitting. They are hit by this, so it's this sort of a game, 
Uh, I cannot explain more, more than this. Okay, let's go. So here we have matrak, matrak uh, play. This is <coughs> this game was uh, was found by Matrak Chinasu. He invented this game. And as you can see, there's a shield, tiny little shield, in one hand. On the other, there's a stick, as you can see. And uh, they fight with each other, with the, with these. Okay, let's go. Wrestling was a national uh, sport among Turks. And here, you know, they got the unrest and they put their uh, dresses in here in some bundles and uh, they are uh, resting. There is a Saka waterman, you see, carrying a, a water bag. Okay, let's go. So this is Galata Christians. They also brought this huge uh, hill uh, they carried a huge hill and on, on which there were various animals and uh, also some shepherds and so on. What happened is this hill was filled with powder, uh, gunpowder, and they blow it up. So it was a trick as well. Okay. Ah, that's this. This game was very um, often uh, often happened, and this, of course, line represented the Muslims or Ottomans, and the uh, wild boar was uh, represented the Christians, and they fought each other, and if the boar wins. It's a bad luck. It is a sign that, you know, in the war, in the next war, uh, Ottomans will lose. If it is, if he, if the lion uh, wins, that it's, it's a good sign. Okay. During this festival, uh, riders, Horse riders uh, show their skills, and uh, this is one of them. Okay, let's go. So they show all their skills, and uh, also shooting. Uh, arch, uh, you know, they are sending their uh, arrows while uh, riding very fast, or you know getting up upside down on the horse and so on. Okay. They show all their skills on horse. Okay. It was very important. This mock uh, fighting also, this folk uh, fighting also was very, were very, uh, very popular. Let's go. Ah, here we have a little restaurant. <coughs> it is very simple, as you can see, how they sit, and these are the tables, and these are where, where they sit. Look at him, <laughs> it's funny. And uh, here we have the food. Okay, let's go. And kebab, shish kebab. <coughs> If anybody says that shish kebab is not Turkish, <laughs> show this. Here we have all the meat hanging, and here these are ready to be cooked, and he is preparing the food, and they are eating shish kebab. Okay, let's go. And here we have a coffee house. A coffee house. These are the coffee cups, you see, 
When I, I was interested in the coffee house, uh, houses, I asked an elderly uh, person how uh, people sat and behaved in the coffee houses. He told me that uh, the intellectual people uh, used to s sit on a higher part of the uh, coffee house and they talked about politics, mostly politics, that's why the, uh, the sultans were not happy to have uh, coffee houses around because they talked uh, politics uh, and uh, or they talked about literature they discussed uh, you know in intellectual way and the younger people sat at the at the foot of their uh, of these people and they they listened to them and they tried to learn few things but uh, very <coughs> silent very respectful and in some other parts in, in some corners they uh, some place were going on this is what uh, i was told here we have almost the same there is another uh, depiction of a coffee house from the 16th century which is uh, at the Ch Chester Beatty Library in Dublin. Okay. Here we have a butcher. So we, here we have um, a trunk of a tree where uh, the uh, meat was cut and uh, or the body of the uh, animal cut into pieces. Here we, you, we see everything in here about butchery. Okay. And sherbet makers. Here we have sherbet makers here. Okay, let's go. And uh, sugar canes. It is, uh, they are sold and they are weighed in here. And what this represents this uh, parrot, uh, what he represents, I cannot tell you. Uh, this is another um, sweet maker. Uh, and uh, you s we see the costume, how they were uh, dressed and so on. And uh, here is the fire. Memonie. He makes memonies. I don't know what uh, what sort of sweet. Let's go. And uh, here is um, here we have the poultry sellers, as you can see the duck and uh, the the chickens and so on. You see, everybody was there. So whatever you are interested in, you can find in these miniature paintings. Let's hurry. So another halwa maker. And this is a jelly maker. And uh, here is the green grocer. Look at them. You know, it's an old tradition. It is beautifully decorated, the, the little tiny little shop. And you see how uh, we learn how how the, the, they were weighed and how many uh, dirhams here we have scales and so. On. Okay. Here is another butcher and a green grocer. Not, not butcher, sorry. A green grocer. Okay, let's go. And we have here tightrope uh, walkers and some other entertainers uh, in here. Okay. Ah, this is now. Gunnar, you help me. This is a very tricky uh, thing because uh, you know these are 
you know, in under which cup you find the money and so on. You know, all these tricks, it's okay. We almost understand everything about these. But, my dear, in here and in here, can you see? These, there are two eggs on a stick. And they walk the eggs on a stick. Can you imagine? I mean, I can imagine that they can walk a ball on a stick. But egg is not totally round. I mean, not even. How they walk the egg? I can, I'm unable to answer. And I ask uh, many people, I ask about this. I never heard in anywhere else, but uh, you know, the text <coughs> tells us that he, these men walk the eggs on a stick. Okay, let's go. So here we have uh, all these tricks shown, uh, okay, let's go. Ah, this is also another uh, puzzle for me because I never heard that a cat was could be trained to walk on a tightrope. This is also a question mark. Okay, so this is, I mean, in my youth, there were so many bears in the streets. Thank God they disappeared. Uh, they should go to the uh, forest. They should not uh, be playing like this. It, is, it hurt my heart. So, but, you know, it was an old tradition. Okay, let's go. Ah, these are uh, snake charmers. And in this battle, there, there is a man with many snakes in it, and they roll the, uh, the battle, and uh, in, at the end of the show, he comes out of the battle, but he is not bitten by any snakes. <coughs> okay, and here we, we have other snakes. Here, these are also some he is uh, making some tricks with this animal. Okay, let's go. And here we have bird, bird uh, sellers, and with with birds they also make some tricks. And here, you know, he is whistling, whistling. There are many uh, birds. It is. It's a it was a tradition. They also whistled uh, with the birds to encourage them to sing. Okay, let's go. So here we have uh, glass makers. You you see the fern of the gla of a glass maker, and we also you see all the tools they use. Very informative manuscript. Here, you know, they carry the glasses, bottles. Okay, let's go. Here is ceramic makers. Ceramic makers. We see. Uh, this is also a child's edition. You know, they make more smoke. And uh, the wheel. Uh, Potter's wheel, you see in here. Okay, let's go. And uh, mill, mills, two mills. One uh, worked with a horse, and here we have four wheels. Wood uh, makers. You see the uh, all the tools. He, he uses, um, so he has all these, 
uh, sh to show, and he, he also shows how the um, how the soul uh, he is showing the soul of his of the shoes he made. Okay, let's go. And uh, leather. Uh, he is a leather seller, and uh, some younger people uh, put some leather on their uh, on their shoulders, and they go walk with the by showing the leather. Okay, and he is a slipper maker. As you can see, his two of them are working, and the, uh, they are them showing. The, their uh, goods, okay, and they also wanted to take part of this festival, but um, you know they could not bring the sea to the um, to the hippodrome, but they could sh bring their uh, boats on wheels, and he is here, he is he is um, fishing a man. As you can see, uh, so he is also uh, catching a fish. Okay, let's go. And uh, the shepherd. So the shepherd also brings the, his uh, bird to the arena. As you can see, let's go. And um, horse blanket maker. You see, and the horseshoe. They are putting shoe on the horse. Ah, here we have camel, camel uh, drivers. So we we have all these camels coming to the arena, and he is uh, spinning the camel hair. Spinning camel hair. Okay, let's go. And mule drivers, they bring mule uh, mules, but uh, there are so many uh, bells hanging on them. And in the every evening, one uh, person, rich person, uh, for instance, uh, on on. Uh, First vizier, that means grand vizier, second vizier, third vizier, uh, and so on, they were responsible for the uh, evening uh, fest uh, festivity, evening fi fireworks. It's a very expensive thing to make, so they took uh, the responsibility. And here we have all these figures. Generally, in, in uh, Christian costumes, filled with gunpowder, mm -hmm. they uh, they are all filled with uh, fires, and firework will take place in one evening. Every evening there was fire fireworks. Okay, let's go. <coughs> Here are some more fireworks going on. Okay. Here another one. This tradition is very interesting. I sh I saw uh, uh, some games like this in Poland. I don't know who took from whom. Okay. Another fi uh, firework. Okay, let's go. And these are mirror makers. So they did not only, you know, walk with their mirrors, but they created beautiful uh, stars. It's, they put them uh, around uh, around two stars, and they show their uh, mirrors like that. Okay, let's go and. Fan, fan makers, they bring their. This is interesting because these are in in couples. In couples, they walk 
and they bring uh, they take uh, the uh, hands with them. And here is a workshop in here at the top. Okay. Ah, sword maker. He is looking at uh, like this to see how the bend, bend of the uh, sword goes on. It's, he is checking the sword, the, uh, the shape of the sword. Okay, let's go. And here is a dagger maker. It, he is selling dagger, not maker, but uh, he is a dagger seller. Okay, let's go. And gun. <coughs> Gun. He is working on a gun. Let's go. And arrow makers. You see, you find everything. Let's do it quickly because I have too many. Broad cloth sellers. Okay. And kaftan. These are tailors. So he, he cuts the, uh, the fabric and um, he starts uh, cutting, cutting it, starts sewing it, and at the end of the tour, he finishes. Without perfect, without any fault. Okay, let's go. Ah, Kemha sellers. This is a brocade fabric sellers. Uh, they made uh, the, uh, as uh, like flags. They show their goods like flags. Okay. Ah, hammam, bath, bath attendants. Here we have a bath, a mobile bath, and they are washing, um, some men are washing themselves. And here are some telax uh, bath uh, working, uh, these men work at the hammam, and they also show, uh, make a tour. Okay, let's go. Ah, bath uh, towels, Peshtama. And they did not want to show them uh, in a dull way, but they, um, they wrapped and they made some birds, some figures out of them. And even, uh, you know, uh, these birds could um, move their wings or their head. How it worked, it, uh, the, the text doesn't tell. Okay. Ah, barber. Here we have a, ba a barber. Do you also see how a barber shop uh, was? So this is Kece, um, uh, felt, felt makers. They made some costumes out of felt, and they got dressed, and they also made a, a line figure out of felt, and they brought it to the arena. Okay, let's go. Ah, here is a man lying, and on his stomach um, there is a big iron thing, and on top of this uh, they beat the copper, and they make a, a vessel. Here we have Sakas, the watermen. They all come to the arena all together. Um, every day they used to water the arena, the, uh, the, uh, the ground, and sweep them clean because every day uh, food, uh, food is given to the public. Okay. Here we have some, uh, some other details of, uh, of these Sata watermen. In the, uh, they are cleaning this ground, okay. And there's a um, banquet for, for some uh, Guests, okay, let's go. And this is for the public. Every day, some food was given to public. Okay, and they brought two uh, 
two oxen here, uh, fried, and people were taking some food, trying to pull a piece from the oxen. And then inside of, from the inside of the oxen, some live animals, uh, birds, and some uh, uh, rabbits or other animals came out. They were alive. And of course, there, were, there was a chaos. So people enjoyed it. But I, I don't like this enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> people. This is uh, in Anatolia when a rich man um, would uh, have his son circumcised, they also um, invite all the people uh, to bring their boys to be circumcised with his own son. And he pays for the entertainment and so on. This is an old tradition to help other people uh, for the circumcision. And in this case, because the, uh, the crown prince circumcised, uh, many, you know, all the, all the uh, boys who are ready to be circumcised came to the uh, hippodrome and they were given some uh, clothing, as you can see. Here they are brought to the arena, to the uh, hippodrome. These are the, uh, the, the garments to be given to the to these child to these children. Uh, they will be circumcised. There is another manuscript showing the same uh, festival. In that case, you know, on the uh, at the hippodrome they are all cut. <laughs> it is all show, but not in this uh, manuscript. Okay. So the Sultan, oh, here you are. He, he is being he is being uh, circumcised in here. Uh, these are the shoes <laughs> they take out. Of they will be given to the children. And they are also given some money. This is money, uh, uh, money uh, plate. It is called parata. They, uh, they can count the money easily and so on. Uh, we, we see in some other miniature paintings as well. And they pay some money as well to the children. Okay, let's go. So because the Sultan is very happy, he also wants to have everybody <coughs> be happy. And um, he invites all the people who are in prison for their debts. Huh? They, they are brought from the prison and in here uh, they, their debts are all paid by the Sultan and then so that they can be free. Okay, let's go. And these are the beggars, so they are also made happy on, the, on this occasion. In every miniature painting we have the Sultan, we see him sitting, but in one occasion he is standing because he is throwing some gold and silver money uh, to the uh, hippodrome. And <laughs> here people, oh, there's a great fight. <laughs> they, uh, they are trying to get some, catch some money. Okay. Ah, if these are the hilats, these are the kaftans to be given to the people who, who served for this festival. 